Hi, everyone. Uh, apologies for my camera being off today, but this is Sarah Martin, one of the co-moderators of the GBV AOR Community of Practice. Um, happy to welcome you all here today uh, to hear about one of our favorite projects that we've been working with on the Community of Practice and to hear more about lessons learned in supporting frontline GBV workers and specifically the importance of the body-mind connection to improve well-being. So without any further ado, we're very happy to have the head of the GBV AOR, Jennifer Chase, joining us today. So Jennifer, let me hand it over to you. Thank you, Sarah. And it's an honor to be here with all of our great colleagues from the community of practice. Um, this is also one of our favorite aspects of the GBV AOR. And um, Sarah is a great moderator. Um, so we really are thankful for all the work she and Beth have both been doing to support the community of practice. And I feel like um, it's a special opportunity to introduce Paula Ramirez. Some of you may have already been in her community of practice courses because she's done three of them online already with the community of practice. So um, you might have been part of this experience. Um, but just to give a little bit of background, um, Paula, we hired her to work with the GBV AOR as part of the team during COVID. And it was um, really observing how many of us, I think many of us here also in the community of practice, um, experienced a lot of new burdens and stress uh, as a result of not knowing what was happening with the pandemic, having kids home from school that needed to have online education or um, didn't have school anymore, um, having to figure out, I think our service providers, we really saw that them having to adapt to trying to work online and what did that mean by working from home, just so many new elements to deal with. And so we hired Paula to also be creative online and she used little videos and had to figure out new methodologies to reach people all around the world who were providing services so they could better figure out how to manage their own stress and improve the quality of the work um, with the people they were providing services to. So I think um, there were a lot of lessons learned and continue to be learned on how to work online. And fortunately, Paula has also now been able to do some of the courses face-to-face um, -face in person. Um, but I think, you know, we, we learned a lot. She's gonna talk about this, um, but being able to bring people together from different parts of a country or even from different countries. And as we went along learning, being able to also include a more in-depth learning to support people in um, applying their practices. So I will turn it over to Paula. One last thing I want to mention is she did get to mention, we did get to present the work and do a workshop at the last SBRI. Um, and that was a great opportunity. And, and I know that, um, Sarah inviting her today is also to share some of those experiences um, from her different practices, but also um, the experience at SVRI. So I will hand over to you, Paula, and thank all of you for, for joining. And I think there will be new opportunities to, to take part in this practice in the future. So thank you and over to you, Paula. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, and thank you, Sarah, as well for opening the space. Uh, yeah, I want to thank especially Jennifer, like we've been doing this work since 2020 and it's been amazing to be able to go to different parts of the world and really integrating this that we're going to share with you today. Um, my name is Paula Ramirez. I actually wanted to start with this slide. Um, just like to make an acknowledgement of the land that I'm seated in at the moment. Uh, just like to show respect for the place that I'm in right now. I'm in, Aus in Australia, in Sydney. It's 8 p.m. for me. Um, and I really like this way in which they acknowledge that this land belonged and belongs to the Bidjigal people. Um, yeah, so I I wanted to start they pay, they are paying respect to elders past and present in this land. 
but also to acknowledge that this work is the result of a co-creative process with GBV first responders in 18 countries since 2020. Yes, yeah? so everything that we're going to see and those uh, the importance of integrating the mind and the body for well-being um, again has all been a result of this co-creative work. So I wanted to start here with this picture. Yes, we have a here um, woman friendly space in South Sudan and I and I would want to ask, yes, like just for, for you to take a moment to reflect upon what makes a safe space. Yes, what makes a safe space? Um, if it's the place, the kind of things it has. Um, but as well, if you can reflect about what happens with people, with first responders, if you can as well represent and be safety for the people that we work with for the women that we work with yeah and i want to start there because this whole mind body connection has a deep relationship with our felt sense of safety and well-being hmm? so a lot of what we're going to be doing in this space together is taking a look at the theory behind the, the, the course that we have done in a very simple way so that we can actually understand that connection between the mind and the body. We're going to go into uh, results of the evaluation that was carried as well by UNSW in Sydney. I think Simon Rosenbaum is as well here and I'm very grateful for his support in doing this evaluation. Mm, yeah, so to start um, talking about this mind-body connection, which are the senses that we have? Yes, if we were together in a circle, I would ask you, which are the, the, the senses that we know we have? And some of you may say um, taste, touch, hearing, Yes, the usual five that we know. But actually what we've been doing in these courses is working with other senses um, that we usually don't connect with because of the amount of stress that we live in. Yes, so I'm going to connect how um, like working with the senses is very important and how stress actually makes us lose track of the perception of those senses. One is interoception, yes, which is the knowing uh, knowing the moment to moment of what is happening in our body, yes? So maybe the knowing that we want to go to the toilet or the knowing that we want to eat, but not only, yes? There is a knowing in our body around the decision-making, for example, that is super important. And it responds to this capacity of actually feeling your 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 own self, um, yeah, in your in in the experience of your own body. There's the proprioception as well, which is the capacity of the body um, to feel itself in relationship to space, to balance and posture. Mm -hmm. And there's the neuroception which is the moment of moment neural detection of safety and threat. Hmm? Because the nervous system is asking a question constantly and is if we're safe or not, yes? So for many of us or for many of the people that we work with, uh, maybe we are in a safe place, yes? But maybe we cannot connect with that sense of safety within our bodies. Uh, because we actually disconnect from our body, from the experience, from the felt sense of our of our body, and then it's very difficult to feel safe. That's why a lot of the things that we do in the courses is actually not telling people that it's important to sleep. Yes, like self-care, sleep. Yes, of course, it's important to sleep. It's important to rest. But 
what we work with is with understanding which are the places that we are constantly contracting, for uh, example, that tell our brain that we're not safe. Yes, if I want to rest, if I want to sleep, but I have my body constantly contracted, then I'm not going to have the experience of safety in my body. But those contractions happen without us actually knowing that we are contracting in that way. Yes. So that's why we work with something that is very simple and very complex, which is awareness. Mm -hmm. Because in that awareness, there is an alignment that is the compass for bodily autonomy. Yes, when we talk about bodily autonomy, having the alignment of this part of our senses, how am I feeling inside? How am I feeling in relationship to space? What is my perceived felt like sense of safety? becomes very important, yes, to be able to be in our well-being, in our safety, and with others. Hmm? But what happens, yes, like we, we like to think about self-care not as a luxury, but as an ethical imperative. And when we are constantly in the survival, in survival mechanisms, because we are under a lot of stress, uh, we are constantly activating um, survival responses that have to do with our fight fly responses and that has an impact in our nervous system mm -hmm. that has an impact in the way in which we yeah live and inhabit in our body mm -hmm. so again when we are having to do one thing after the other, one thing after the other and when we are in under a lot of stress we create a lot of pressure and tension that we may not be aware of and that has an impact in our well-being but as well in the quality of the work that we do in the field. Um, and I feel like stopping here for a moment, yes, like this um, presentation and also because of the amount of time we have, which is amazing, I'm going to, to leave a little um, part towards the end for a practice, but I would love to stop here for a moment for us to um, make a little practice so that we can understand what is it that I'm talking about uh, at the level of the body and this activation of the, of the nervous system, yes? So when we are in this survival activation, when we are under a lot of stress and when we are in this fight or fly responses, the sympathetic nervous system gets activated, meaning our whole bodies as well looking for that safety, our, um, our heart rate goes up, our stomach starts working in funny ways. And the parasympathetic nervous system is the one that helps us digest information. Yes, it's the one that tells us, ah, it's good. Yes, you don't, not, you don't need to be in that stress state, in that contraction, but there's the possibility to find another quality in your body and therefore in your um, perceived sense of well-being. So I want to do a practice, yes, like to invite you to, to, to explore with your body how this activation happens. So if it's possible for you to bring your hand, your right hand or your left hand, whatever feels more comfortable for you at the height of your jaw, of your chest. And taking a moment to to notice how is it that you're breathing, the hand is not doing anything in particular. And if possible, contracting the hand, making a fist, and noticing what happens with your breath. Mm -hmm. If you can notice there what happens with other muscles as you make this fist. And probably if we were together, I would ask, yes, if there's people who want to write about it 
Uh, what what happens with your breath? What happens with other muscles? Yes. Maybe for some of you, what you are experiencing is that the breath contracts, that other muscles contract as well. Yes. And in this moment, we are being aware about that activation. But oftentimes, under a lot of stress, we are not uh, aware that we are making that amount of contraction and tension. And then we live life uh, in a constant contraction, in a constant sympathetic activation, uh, creating issues at the physical and at the mental health level. Hmm? So if we keep being with our hand like that, with our fist, and if we bring slowly, slowly the attention of the mind towards the fist, taking a moment to notice your breath. Imagining that the fist can actually breathe. Mm -hmm. That you can take your breath towards the experience of the fist in the moment. I would ask what would the fist wants to do? And perhaps for some of you, for many of you, the experience is that the fist wants to let go. Yeah, like wants to open. Mm -hmm. This is the quality of the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is a lot of what we try to explore over this course that I'm going to tell you in a moment, like how many sessions are we making it and, and, and more details. But it is very much cultivating this awareness of our interoception, yes, of our capacity of being uh, connected with that quality so that we can have a, yeah, more openness and this felt sense of safe, safety and well-being in that awareness of our body. Hmm? What? Uh, yeah. So when we are constantly, yes, in that going outside, uh, when we are on these sympathetic states or in hypoarousal states, mm, we go away from something that is called the window of tolerance. Yeah. So the window of tolerance is as well a topic that we talk about during these sessions together. And this, the window of tolerance is this place where you can manage, where you can feel that maybe you have stress, that maybe you, but then you have access to conscious choice and reason. Yes, you may feel, okay, this is stressful, but I can manage, I can cope. But then when we are not in that window, we may go to one of two places. One is hyper arousal states, where we feel that we want to fight and fly. Yes, when we have... Uh, anxiety, anger, um, a lot of emotions that feel really, really difficult. Uh, and it's something that just takes over. Yeah, that we don't actually realize and takes over. Or we can go into hypoarousal states, yes, where we feel that we freeze, that we feel numb, hmm? that we don't feel a lot of, of connection. Um, and again, what we try to do during these weeks together in this course is trying to build the capacity of that window of tolerance through the experience of our body. Why is this uh, important and what is it based on? Yes, one of the things that we wanted to bring into this presentation today is, again, the importance of the mind-body connection. And I wanted to bring the polyvagal theory that supports the the ground of our work hmm? a, the the polyvagal theory um yeah it's a um, behavioral platform of our nervous system yeah and it lies in the parasympathetic nervous system there are two branches in the parasympathetic nervous system one is the dorsal branch and the other one is the vagal branch Yes. Um, we're going to start with the dorsal vagal. Yes. 
And I just want to perhaps zoom a little bit this. I don't know if you can see it, but this dorsal branch, it's here, like it's in our stomach and down through our gut. Um, yep, sorry. I wanted to, yeah, sorry, yeah. So it activates when there is threat, yes, that, that part of our dorsal, of our gut. When the fight and fly response does not work, hmm? when we go into freeze states, and we go into freeze states which segregate natural opiates that calm and disconnect from possible pain. Hmm? And then on the other side of that uh, vagal nerve, we have the ventral vagal, which evolved for our social interaction and our sense of well-being. Yes. You, we, we connect, like it, it connects through the face, voice, eyes, middle ear, heart rate, and lung. I'm not going to uh, open it, like not, not going to zoom it because it like makes it funny here for me, but it's this whole green circuit, yes, that you see that it connects like with your gesture, again, with voice, eyes, middle ear, heart, aid, heart rate, lungs. Um, and it's learned from our caregivers and keeps learning from meaningful social interactions, yes? So whenever we are in a place and we are with friends and then there's someone that comes into the room and we feel that mm, there's something not quite right with a person that just came in, we notice because of this possibility of connection, because we learn how to connect with others from this part of our um, vagal nerve that is the ventral vagal, this front part that helps us connect with the world and makes us feel well when we feel safe with another person, when we feel um, seen, connected, yeah. So I'm gonna allow these people to come in, yeah. Um, so this is where where we really want to to, to connect how is it that our own well-being it's not a luxury but an ethical imperative in a way that if you if, if first responders feel safe and feel in their own possibility of, of of well-being that is the quality from where we are going to bring our presence and the connection to the people that we work with if we are too much out of our window and we're working with people, our um, social interaction is going to be dysregulated between both people. Yes, whenever we're able to come into that sense of safety, into that well-being in ourselves, we can co-regulate the other person um, so that the other person feels safe with you. But again, if we are under a lot of stress and there are a lot of activation, it's very difficult to connect with this quality in ourselves and in the relationship we are establishing with others. Hmm? So that's why we, we work finding this ventral vagal, which for me is the window of tolerance in itself. Yes, is that place where I can, ah, okay, I can feel connected with others, with myself. Um, how is the ventral vagal activated? And this is a lot of the, like these components are part of what we get to explore in our weeks together. Hmm? In relating to others in a way that feels safe activates the ventral vagal, but conscious breath, conscious movement, self-touch, yes, the possibility of just bringing, for example, your hands to your thighs and maybe squeezing the, the, the thighs, just because self-touch or the relationship of your body touching the ground yes 
for example, brings a connection to the present moment, to the here and now. Drinking water activates the ventral vagal as well. Activating the voice, making sounds like ah, mm, activates the ventral vagal as well. The connection with hands and creativity as well has a very important role in activating that ventral vagal. Mm, feeling culturally safe, yes, that we have the possibility of bringing as well our own cultural um, dimensions into the work that we're doing. Yes, like I've had people in different countries bringing a, or their drums or their own rituals. Um, so, so feeling that the knowledge that you have from your ancestry, from your cultural background is welcome and is part of cultivating well-being um, and a common sense of safety. And being in touch with nature, yeah, connects as well, like activates the ventral vagal. Mm. So again, this is some of the elements that we work with during the sessions. Um, I wanted to bring this um, quote that I really like, which says, trauma is not what happens to us, but what we hold inside in the absence of an empathetic witness. Mm -hmm. And self-care, not as a luxury, but an, as, as an ethical imperative. Safety is yourself. Mm -hmm. Again, as much as you cultivate a sense of safety in yourself as first responders, that's the coherence. That's the place from where we are going to be able to bring safety to others. Last year in the, uh, in the GPC forum in the Global Protection Conference, Bruno from, the, from um, Mind Action, he started the, the, the conference asking, you know, like, what is safety? And if you are in a situation where you feel that you're threatened, which kind of person do you want to have in front of you? Yes, and I feel exactly that, you no, know, like the one of the answers for me, the answer to that question is what happens in this exploration of our selves to bring more awareness, more emotional regulation, decision making um, for the sake of ourselves, our loved ones and the people that we work with. So this is this is uh, the importance of the mind body connection. Mm -hmm. This is the the program that we work is based on a mindfulness based stress reduction program. We have run it in over eight weeks or six weeks or four weeks, depending on the time availability of the groups. The truth is that whenever we offer only four weeks, um, we end up doing six or eight. Um, because people really find the benefit of it. Um, there are three components. There are three main um, aspects of this course. One is the practices, the experiments. We go into the body as our territory. We do it in a trauma-sensitive way because we acknowledge that bringing the awareness to the present and to the experience of the body is not easy for many of us for many reasons that have to do with experiences in our body that we don't want to be connected with so a lot of the practices that we do are not a lot but all the practices that we do are trauma sensitive um we get to share yeah so there's a space for circle for connecting with each other in in what we like to call a, a common humanity yes finding that and, and, and this this has happened in spaces, women that uh, first responders that actually acknowledge that they have as well been GVV survivors. And that's why they're doing this work. Yeah. So having spaces to actually bring ourselves. Yes. Beyond GVV workers, can we bring the humanity of us in this exploration of our body, in this exploration of our well-being the connection 
um, with ourselves, steer, things start stirring and coming up. And it's very important to find others to support each other in this um, exploration, yeah? And then we have topics. We have topics as the survival mechanisms, what happens in the brain, in the nervous system, the window of tolerance, um, so that we can have a, a baseline as well um, to help us explore. Mm -hmm. Where have we been? We have a, had groups of 20 to 25 GBV first responders through the GBV subclusters in, in all these countries. Uh, some of them have been online, some of them have been in person. Mm. And, and we are actually opening a new group uh, within the community of practice. Uh, I think it's going to be in May. We will let you know with, with SADA, but there's a course that is going to be open and we are starting working with new countries and groups um, in the in the coming days. This is I this is these last slides are, are going to be about what worked. This was an evaluation that uh, was carried out by UNSW in in seven of the countries that we worked with. So we wanted to share with you some of the results that we shared as well at SVRI last year, last year, two years ago in Mexico. Um, what worked within these courses? Yes, the mind-body connection and the connection between practice and theory. That was something that was really uh, appreciated. Yes, it's not just a space emotional or spiritual, but there's a physiological component that allowed us to understand also what happens at the physical level when doing these practices. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, like this this thing where, where we're not saying what are the things that are good for our self-care. We know we may have a little list by our computer, yes, uh, but the, the thing is not only knowing, but can we have spaces to actually integrate that exploration of ourselves and our own mind-body connection, cultural sensitivity, uh, was as well something that that really worked um, and is adapting uh, the the course to to what's relevant for people in the moment. This is a quote for from a person in 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 Yemen where we made the course in the moment where they were breaking fasting during Ramadan because they decided on the second session that that was the moment that they wanted to do the like to be in the experience of this trauma sensitivity um learning about the nervous system and the window of tolerance has been one of the most important things to slowly overcoming the fear i felt in my body yeah so again the practices are um they have the acknowledgement of that difficulty for many of us of connecting with the body in the presence in in the present so the practices have um choices invitational language and towards the end of the session we're going to do a practice together as well so that you can have a little taste of what it is about from a practical point of view um the calling to autonomy Yes, uh, this possibility of being truly in ourselves um, and to be seen by others in that way. I was, um, that makes me think a group that I had yesterday from uh, Venezuela and they were like um, feeling a lot of tiredness and some of them came to, to the session to sleep and we were with the, with the videos and many of us were seeing the others sleep and it was like, ah, can we allow ourselves to be seen and to see the others in a quality of resting in the autonomy of just like I I just need to rest I just need to be with myself and not having to do anything or to show anyone that I'm intelligent or that I'm good or that I'm can I just be with myself mm. identity 
Um, this process made me reflect on how much my identity was built around being a GVV worker. I'm ready to find myself again, my pleasure, my hands, my art. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because we go a lot into, into this exploration of ourselves, who we are as human beings, as mothers, um, because that is what brings the coherence uh, for our well-being, but for the possibility of being with other people. Mm -hmm. How can we find our center and ourselves again? Connection with others, it can be very lonely to do this work. I often feel attacked even by my own colleagues. It was so refreshing to feel safe in this group. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it that we can create safety within the GVV circle as well? Yes, and feel that we can actually talk about our things, that we can be seen, understood, um, that's that's as well something very important that I know that Saira within the COP with other two colleagues are working on. Um, judgment, um, like the, the awareness of judgment. This training helped me realize how much I was judging myself and others. It has helped me have more compassion and understanding yes one of the things the mind like to do the most is judgment yes i like this i don't like this like 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 don't like don't like don't, don't like and and it's very important to be aware of that uh, judging others but the judgment towards ourselves that can be oftentimes very rough yes and it's as well very difficult to connect with our interception with our own body with our own awareness if we're being so rough on ourselves no so that's like cultivating the awareness of ah, i'm being rough what happens ah can i be no can i have more space for compassion being present and mindful um i just feel that these sessions have been helpful for me to work with more attention to myself and others when delivering services hmm? So again, this connection from the polyvagal aspect, no, like this ventrality, what is true to myself, it's going to be the truth that I'm going to show the quality of the work that I'm going to be given to the people that I work with. Reduce burnout. Um, I needed a space to handle multiple stresses, stressors and not, to, uh, and not get to burnout as it was deeply affecting my work. Empathy. I was feeling frustrated with the thought of survivors not finding their agency. Then I realized I didn't know it for I didn't know it for myself either. So how could I transmit something so important? Hmm? And emotional regulation. We know now that it's not about another thing to do. I can access my emotional resources wherever I am with my awareness to face difficult situations with survivors. Hmm? So the emotional regulation, the um, your own emotional regulation and the co-regulation with others. That's why that, again, the importance of the mind-body connection for your own self, but as well for the coherence of the work that we do, the well-being, the safety that we want to create. Um, yeah for 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 survivors yeah so thank you i it we have still 20 minutes and i was um wanting to leave some space for for questions but as well for a practice so if if anyone has a question or a comment that you may want to um ask whether if in the chat or open your microphones um, or raise your hand um or maybe uh, after the practice um, yeah i'm just taking a look at messages only now thank you said um, Yeah. 
Yeah, so we may we may go into a practice. It's so good to see all of you connected. I think there's 29 of us. Hmm? So yeah, we maybe we can do a yeah, like a 10 minutes practice and then maybe go into breakout rooms to share how we are feeling, what's happening. I see ah, I see some names that I that I know. <laughs> so if you can as well like share within your groups, yeah, your your experience with the course. And then we go for the closing. And now I'm, I'm I'm having the issue of the practice and the questions. So I'm gonna Alexandra is saying thank you for the great presentation, Paula. Do you have any tips on contextualizing these methods and content to different settings, literacy levels, etc.? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What I what I am um, what I think is that this possibility of of the connection with the present and the connection with yourself. It can be as so one one of the examples that I can give is I I was doing a work with uh, South Sudanese grave diggers. Um, there were like seven men, um, and we started doing this this work and this connection with their own body and their interoceptive awareness. But that was not like while seated, uh, no, like seat like in a um, the stillness it was while they were doing the work of grave digging so while grave digging we started bringing more awareness towards the body towards themselves and then a more emotional regulation happened and actually they were able to acknowledge a, and realize that one of the things that they were Mm, having a lot of issues with was that they were not they had not the chance of burying their dead people with their rituals and with their ceremonies yes so again what I want to say with this is that it is as simple and complex as being able to listen to what the the person the group um needs and wants to create their own safety and to feel emotionally safe culturally safe um so again it's simple and and complicated in that quality of listening to actually what is needed hmm? i don't know i hope it, it makes sense um, i i I think we're gonna go into into a practice. Hmm? I see. I see more more messages coming in, and if I get distracted with them, I think we're not gonna go into into experiencing a little bit of ah the possibility of of connecting hmm? with ourselves. And there's a way in which I really like to start um, and I can say always hmm? and is if it's possible for for you to notice where you are at the moment that can happen with your eyes open or closed but whether if you're in the car driving or if there's someone starting the the day and rushing in the house um, or if you happen to be really seated here yeah the the beauty of of this somehow is that whatever moment whatever place is the place to bring a little bit of awareness of where can i yeah where am i what's happening what's going on so again with eyes open or closed taking a moment to to notice where are you in relationship to the space that you're in Maybe perceiving where's the like the the door, the window, the amount of light in the room. Mm. And if possible, bringing your 
awareness towards the places that are touching the ground or the chair or any surface that you're in touch with. Yeah, if it, there's a table, maybe the connection of your hands with the table. So bringing awareness towards those points of relation. With the ground, with the chair, with any surface. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing a little bit of awareness towards the distance there is between your shoulders and your ears. If it's possible to uh, bring that awareness there. The distance between the upper teeth and the lower teeth. And this again can happen if you are doing something else at the same time as you're listening to this. Mm -hmm. And noticing how is it that you're breathing there in that awareness of your jaw, of your shoulders. And if you feel like it bringing the the head down so that the upper vertebras can stretch a little bit. And as you do this, noticing if your jaw contracts again. You're noticing, I see that you're breathing there. And if you feel like it moving the head towards the left or the right as you feel as you feel comfortable or and noticing if the shoulder perhaps goes up yeah like we're so used to tension that we don't realize that maybe sometimes the shoulder alone goes up creating that awareness as if there was a pillow between the ear and the shoulder and allowing the head to go back and notice that connection again of the jaw with, with gravity. Ah. If you feel like it, if you can, making a little noise like ah. I'm bringing the head towards the other side. I'm on the right side, but you may be on the left side or you may be in another movement or in stillness. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing the head down, you're still. Following this invitation. And coming to the center. Mm -hmm. And noticing if there is a need perhaps to move the shoulders or the spine, the head. As the practices get longer, I longer and as we come more you know, into the sessions, um it's it's beautiful often to see different people do different things and moving in different ways because it's actually each person finding what is it that they need what is it that they need to move or not what is it that they need to stretch or not no uh, going into the bodily autonomy together yeah so if you had your eyes closed allowing the eyelids to bring light and shape in if you had your eyes open again noticing where are you what's the quality of of your body in that place your breath your presence mm. yeah thank you 
I yeah, I'm feeling that maybe we can go into into small groups, um, so that we can share how is it that we're feeling with the practice or with the information shared, if it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense, if like questions that that we may have. I don't know, maybe Shiva, if you can open just three three minutes and then Sarah is writing about the answer for the evaluation. Yeah, and if you feel like going to your rooms and sharing how are you, how what 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 is present at the moment. Mm -hmm. Akpa, Abubakar, if you can go on, or maybe Shiva, we can move Shailendra to another room. Yeah. Ah, oh, no, Akpa just arrived. Oh, yeah. I, I moved a couple of people to some wow. rooms. Let's hey, Sada. Hi. <laughs> ah, you're recording. This is recording still. Let me move Lydia to take a look at questions. I don't know what it means when it says not joined, that they just didn't go into the room. Yeah, probably not just accepted to go to the room. Okay, everyone's in a room. No one's in an empty room. <laughs> So Paula, I was um, reflecting on my own judgmental techniques, uh, tactics, and <laughs> there was like a nonstop flow of people. Paula, I'm, I'm not sure if you can hear. I'm guessing no. Okay, as everyone comes back to the uh, plenary, we'll hand it over to Paula. We're having a small technical difficulty where she cannot hear us, but we will alert her via the chat. And uh... yeah, welcome back, everyone. Um, time, yeah, time just went by. It looks like I cannot hear. Like I don't know why, but what 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 happened with the audio of my computer? Um, but yeah, thank you for, for coming, for being here. And if you have, um, yeah, more questions or, 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 or comments through the GVVAUR, um, the GVVAUR and the GVV community of practice, we can stay connected. Yes. Please, if you can fill out the survey, that would be amazing. Um, and hopefully you had a good time with with your breakout rooms and um, yeah you got to connect and share at least names in the little time we had thank you and there are more sessions coming for with the COP. I don't know, Sarah, if you want to 
if you want to say anything for for closing So thank you everyone and thank you to Paula who can't hear me talking, but thank you all for coming uh, today and I hope you found this interesting and you picked up some tips. We'll share, of course, the recording um, on the COP and Paula is a member of the community of practice. So you can always reach out to her. Um, thank you, Jennifer Chase from the GBV AOR, and for also offering, if you are a member of a subcluster, subsector, or AOR, and you would like to have Paula come and present, just get in touch with her at chase at unfpa.org. Um, and as always, thank you to Shiva, who in the background keeps us all together and who is our backbone and keeps us, uh, keeps us going. So thank you all, and looking forward to seeing you all on the COP. Thank you, Paula. Thanks for everyone.